Let's get some perspectives on this matter now. Dr. Howard Iana Shapiro is the Chief Agricultural Officer at the global food giant Mars and is live in studio with us uh, tonight. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Dr. Shapiro. Uh, tell us, for the benefit of those of us who are not familiar with what gene sequencing really is all about, what is it and why is it relevant at this point in time? If one can understand that when we look at plant science and it's 10,000 years old of making selections from the field, the ability to speed the process up and understand the mechanism of the plant are very essential for the future of the planet. With a genetic map, we are able to choose the treasures in that information, whether it's drought tolerance, climate adaptability, or nutritional value. This map will allow us to make those decisions in a much faster manner and bring to the farmer and then to the rural consumers of this project a more nutritious set of plants that will help to end the plague of stunting in children. Indeed, so we're turbocharging Mother Nature as it were, but I also understand that the findings from these studies will be made publicly available. Why is that? Well, there's no reason to hold this information and capture it for one group only. If we make it public, people will have access to this information and the ability to speed forward with more nutritious plants will happen much quicker. As an open source data, people from around the world will be able to input information to help and speed this forward so that we really can bring as fast as possible a nutritional security to the rural sector, which has been lacking at this point. Indeed. I understand that genetic sequencing programs of this sort do require enormous amounts of computational power. Are there any plans to outsource parts of the number crunching, say, in a similar manner to Stanford's uh, Folding at Home project? Well, what is happening on a, r a very fast basis is the nature of high-speed data computing and the sequencers themselves are changing rapidly. The local sequencers will have uh, the ion protons based at the World Agroforestry Center are essentially a solid-state chip. So the amount of computing power that is needed to analyze that information is falling rapidly by the accuracy of the information that these chips are be able to deliver. Indeed. Uh, let's, let's look at this over the last couple of decades. There's been, at best, a relatively limited market for often crops across Africa. So walk us through how this program will then translate to realizing those gains that we spoke about earlier, cutting malnutrition, making sure that we have better quality, more nutritional produce on tables across Africa. Well, when one says that there is not a market, I think it's a mis misnomer. There's a gigantic market because these are the food crops that are eaten in the rural sector every day of the week. These are the crops that women are eating during pregnancy. These are the crops that they feed their newly born children and sustain them. If we can increase the nutritive value, if we can increase the folate content or the zinc content or the vitamin A content, Many of the diseases that are the outcome of malnutrition and chronic hunger can help be eliminated. Indeed. Uh, walk us through this as well. As, as a food company, a global food giant, what exactly is in, is in it for Mars from this project, given the fact that a lot of the information will be made publicly available anyway? Well, as a privately held family-owned company, what is unique is that we have the ability to make decisions differently than a publicly held company. So when I approached the business to take this project on and help lead it and organize it into the African Orphan Crops Consortium, this unusual collaboration. They were enthusiastic. The use of some of our profits refers to freedom and the ability to make decisions in the rural sector that will influence the next generations of farmers and their consumers is something we feel we have a responsibility to help solve the problem. As I see it, finally, Dr. Shapiro, you have a fairly interesting mix of backers in this project, the United States, China, NEPED. It's an enormous public-private partnership. How, how did this entire dis group of diverse individuals and personalities really come together? It, it's very simple. The idea of stunting not being solved in the rural sector, the idea of having generations of children who do not reach their neurological their physical or their economic potential is unacceptable. So when talking about China, BGI, the world's most important sequencing center, life technology with the equipment here, the other people, iPlant, 
which will hold the data and help us process it, University of California, Davis, which will teach the academy, the World Agroforestry Center here in Nairobi, which will host it. We're all in it together as uncommon collaborators. We're not competitors. In fact, we complement each other, and this allows this project to have a reality that started from a commitment of the Clinton Global Initiative two years ago to mobilization and to an opening of the academy today at the World Agroforestry Center. It's, it's quite unusual, but this is the future of uncommon collaboration. Indeed. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Dr. Shapiro. It's been an Thank absolute you, pleasure having you here on Biz Africa tonight.